Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to show you how to make an anti-dandruff shampoo. Now there's a lot of exciting and innovative actives in this area, but I'm going to be using zinc pyrithione to make my anti-dandruff shampoo. The reason I've picked this active is not only does it have a huge body of evidence behind it, it's also readily available for small suppliers and it's potentially one of the hardest actives to stabilize. So I thought by showing you a video today of how to stabilize this very heavy but effective anti-dandruff active, you could then choose to use a different active in a very stable and effective base formula. So let me show you how it's made. So this is the product we're gonna be making today. You see it's got a beautiful viscosity to it. It also foams up really well and feels really beautiful on the hair. I'm not using sulfates in this product. I know a lot of people have issues with sulfates and also think that this contributes to some of their dandruff problems. So I'm using some really mild but high foaming and high cleansing surfactants in here so you still get a fabulous shampoo result. Now the active, as I mentioned, is zinc pyrithione. This is it here as a 48% solution, and this is the material we'll be using. Now please contact us for full details of this formula and materials that we're using. We're happy to share it with you. It's far too much to put on the screen. Now, as you'll notice, this is the active material, and as I've mentioned, it's quite heavy. There's a lot of particles in here that we need to stabilize. In a shampoo base, if I don't stabilize them effectively, they'll simply fall to the bottom over time. Now to stabilize these very heavy particles, I'm going to be using a material called Van Natural XGB. This is it here. It's a bentonite and xanthan gum blend. Now one of the great things about the bentonite in here is it will stabilize really heavy particles in even a foaming base without causing a big increase in viscosity. It's also got some xanthan gum which does help us build a little bit of viscosity in this formula so we get that beautiful suspension and shampoo viscosity. Now to mix this material, it's really important that I use high shear. So I'm going to add this to my water phase and then high shear for 10 minutes. Now I'd normally switch to propeller stirring from here, but to show you just how well the Van Natural XGB stabilizes my zinc pyrithione, I'm actually going to switch to even more basic stirring methods to show you just how effectively the raw material does its job. In a more professional setting, I can use my propeller mixer at this stage, but like I say, the materials are doing the work for me. So I'm gonna use some basic mixing equipment to show you just how effective this is at stabilizing my heavy particles. Now to this gelled water phase, I'm going to be adding my surfactants. Here I have some glycerin, I have a super fatting agent, I have a cocomitopropyl hydroxysultane. Uh, the sultane material is actually even more mild than the betaine material, so I'm using that in this formula. And then I'm using some sodium methyl cocal torate because this gives a beautifully rich and dense foam gentle yet effective clean. Now I'm just gonna heat this up just a little. I don't need to heat it up a lot and that's simply so I can incorporate my pasty surfactant without needing to stir too much. I don't wanna to put too many bubbles into this gelled base. Now once that's mixed in homogeneously, I can add my zinc pyrithione. Now again, I'm using this, there's a lot of scientific data behind this material. You could use other actives as well. I've chosen this because it is normally hard to stabilize. Uh, it's also really effective against the Malassezia species of yeast that is particularly responsible for dandruff. It has a fungicidal activity, so it helps really stop any of that proliferation in its tracks. It also has a really good balance on sebum production. So it helps with the entire process of dandruff production and control. Music 
and I'm just going to add the preservative. You could add fragrance or essential oils at this point. You could add any other actives or extracts you might want to incorporate for marketing story or activity. The final pH of this comes out at around six, so there's no need to even adjust that pH. If you do add other extracts or essential oils or actives, please make sure you check and adjust that pH. It should come out at around six to be really friendly to the scalp. By the next day, it will thicken slightly to this viscosity you see here. And forms a beautifully rich foam when mixed with water. Well, there you go. That's how to create and stabilize an anti-dandruff shampoo using zinc pyrithium. Just remember you can use other actives and remember to check your local country regulations around the use of any anti-dandruff actives and claims you want to make about the finished product. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.